What's up guys, I have another pen video for you today, uh, and as you can see from the box here, this happens to be a sailor pen. Uh, this is my first sailor pen, and I'm actually pretty impressed with the pen itself, um, but you know, just to kind of show you the packaging, uh, this is a Sailor 1911 um, standard uh, in a fine nib. I also believe that this is also known as the um, 1911M, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, you know, I see them used interchangeably a lot. Uh, it's like the smaller sized um, 1911 minus the the uh, I guess the uh, like the Sapporo would probably be a smaller pen, uh, but that's in the uh, the Pro Gear line. Uh, this pen comes in a pretty nice box actually. Uh, it has like a nice you know pleather box uh, that's hinged. The pen here. Um, one detail I actually like about this uh, how this pen came is that it actually came in a sealed. Um, plastic sleeve, which, you know, you know is nice because, I mean, obviously it's already open. I've been writing with this pen for several, several weeks now. Uh, I just put it back in to show you how it came in. I, I got it in the, uh, the blue version with the, uh, with the gold trim. Um, but the nice thing about having a pen that's like completely sealed in plastic is that you know no one has really messed with the pen. Um, you know, when I bought, like, my, M my Pelican M600, um, it wasn't the pen wasn't actually sealed like it was yeah you know it was in the box and everything and that's fine but that pen ended up having like a screwed up nib uh, the tines were way out of alignment and you know obviously if you have a pen that's not sealed completely and you know customers you know and the store can show the customer the pen and allow the uh, the customer to test right with the pen uh, there's potential for damage you know and so having a sealed pen is nice uh, and it obviously it definitely really showed um, this pen, the most impressive impressive thing about this pen is that when I got it out and I put it under the loop and I inspected it like I do all my new pens, um, the tine alignment and the tine spacing was absolutely perfect. Uh, I did not do anything to the nib of this pen um, because I felt like if I tried to adjust it anymore, I probably would have screwed it up. Uh, and that's saying something considering every other pen that I've ever bought Regardless of whether you know, like you know, even the uh, the the custom Sean Newton pen that I had, uh, you know, I had to adjust the nib on that and polish up a little bit. Uh, my more expensive pens, like you know, my Pelican, my M six hundred, M six fifty, the one forty nine I got, and you know, like the one forty six, um, they all required a little bit of uh, tine ad adjustment. Uh, granted, you know, the the one forty nine and one forty six I got used. You know, any used pen, I kind of expect that I'll probably have to make some adjustments. Uh, either the previous owner wrote that with a different hand at a slightly different angle, and you know that probably required some time alignment there, um, or you know the pen just had bad time alignment from the get go. Um, but for new pens, you know, like my 600, my 650, those were brand new pens. And, you know, granted, the uh, the 600, I think when it was in the store, it was probably handled by other people. That's why the timeline was so bad. Um, the 650, it, I'm pretty sure it was never handled. And the time alignment wasn't too off, but it was still definitely a little off. And this pen, none of those problems. Um, anyway, getting on with the rest of the packaging. Like I said, nice, you know, pleather box. Uh, comes with like a you know the standard uh, inf well that's not the information here's your warranty and information and how to use your pen and stuff uh, it actually came with two uh, cartridges uh, in black I believe which I did not use they're still sealed because I I just went ahead and used the converter and the uh, the converter that actually comes with this pen is quite nice uh, it's a standard uh, sailor converter let me just get this out of the way so here's the pen just go ahead. You know, standard converter works well. Uh, you can unscrew this um, metal part here and actually take the uh, take the converter apart. That's not a problem. No depth perception through the camera viewfinder. Uh, there we go. Uh, in terms of this pen, it's it's not an overly small pen. I guess probably that's why they call it like the standard or I mean the M, uh, probably medium. Uh, you know, there is one size larger. You know, this 1911 large. Uh, which is, I think, usually around $100 more. Uh, but when capped, this pen is actually very similar in length to the Pelican M600. Uh, it does have tapered ends versus flatter ends that the Pelican has, so it's slightly longer just by just the hair. Um, th the thing is that this surprised me, actually, um, 
when I got the pen is actually when it's uncapped, it's actually shorter than the uh, than the M600. Uh, if I put it kind of not the factory 600 nib on there, uh, but you can see the M600 has uh, you know like maybe almost a centimeter of um, extra length to it, um, which kind of puts it in like the uh, the Pilot Ferrera length. Um, you know, the 600 length is really good for me. I, I generally don't grip right at the section. I, for the M600, I actually grip higher up towards around the thread. So you can see there, like, I have around a centimeter sticking out uh, from the web of my uh, hand to the end of the of the pen. Um, so with this pen, you know, it it's it's just barely barely long enough. Uh, but the fortunate thing is that you know it does post relatively well, and it's not super back heavy when posted. You know, it doesn't have like a really heavy cap or anything, and it and uh, it does post quite deep. You know, post like maybe an almost an inch, slightly more than an inch deep. Uh, so you know, it's not like the cap is way out here, and it makes it really back heavy or anything. Uh, so I don't mind posting this pen. Um, you know, one of the complaints that I had about the uh, the Pilot Pereira is that it was too short, and I, it's probably the same length. Hang on. Uh, I have my pen case here to the side. I think open is pretty close to the same length. Let's see. Okay, so here's the Pilot Pereira. You can see, uh, capped obviously, the um, the sailor is longer, but uncapped. Yeah, actually, the Prera is still even you know even shorter than the uh, than the sailor, and you know that's you know one of the biggest complaints I had about this pen was that it was really short. Uh, you know, I can just barely use it. And, um, you know, posting is not so bad. It's not, like, the problem with this pen is that the body is so lightweight, uh, and it doesn't really post as deep. Uh, actually, similar enough, I guess. But uh, just because the um, the body length itself isn't as long, it, you know, the, the balance kind of brings it more back heavy. Uh, and, you know, while this pen isn't super uncomfortable to write with uh, when posted, the, uh, the nib performance wasn't really quite up to snuff enough to make me want to use this as a regular pen. Uh, you know, it is nice that it is a slip cap, I guess, but uh, this has kind of been in storage for a while. Um, but with this pen, the nib writes so well that I have no problems using it as a daily pen, even though it is shorter. Uh, you know, first of all, at this length, it's still usable, just barely, but it is usable. Uh, Post-it works perfectly fine. I can write for a long period of time with no issues whatsoever. Um, like I said, the time alignment was super, um, like super close and accurate and probably as good as I'm ever gonna get from a factory pen. Uh, you know, people have always said Sailor nibs were, uh, were quite amazing. Uh, well, I guess generally people say, you know, the three big uh, Japanese companies, you know, Sailor, Platinum, and uh, Pilot have uh, amazing nibs. And, you know, so far I've gotten, um, you know, I've gotten Pilot pens and I've, my first Sailor here, and the nibs were quite outstanding. Um, it just writes really well. Uh, you know, because it is a very fine point, you know, people usually say that the Japanese nibs generally write one uh, grade finer than like the European nibs. So, you know, in terms of like a, a European pen or an American pen, this is probably right closer to an extra fine, uh, which I guess is pretty accurate. Um, it is a wet writing pen, so it, it's like, it's a wet extra fine. So it's kind of what I would consider in between an extra fine to a fine depending on the grade of paper that you're using. Um, the tipping itself is basically just a ball. Let's see if I can actually show you guys. Uh, I don't want to ask. <sighs> Not the best way of showing you a macro of the nib, but uh, you can see it's it's quite a fine point. But the um, but the tipping is basically just a ball, which gives you no line variation. Uh, this is actually considered uh, sailor considers this a hard fine. Here you go. So uh, HF stands for hard fine. Uh, you know it doesn't flex at all whatsoever. It gives very slightly, but not so not that much. Uh, I might as well just show you the rest of the nib. There you go. You see the uh, 1911 and the uh, the sailor anchor, and you see this is a 14 karat gold nib. Um, I believe if you get this pen from uh, the Japanese domestic market, it actually comes with a 21 karat nib. 
Uh, I'd be inter interested in probably trying one of those or owning one of those. Uh, this I got from uh, Levenger because they had a, a discount going on and I decided, well, you know, with the discount, this was a good enough price for me to buy it. Uh, you know, I, pro I think I saved like 15 or 20 dollars compared to if I were to uh, buy it from um, like a Japanese uh, a store in Japan uh, but you know I, I lose the 21 karat nib for 14 karat nib uh, it doesn't matter really in terms of flexibility because in all honesty I believe that regardless of whether you're getting the 21 or the 14 karat gold nib from Sailor uh, if it's labeled a hard fine it, it's a hard nib um, you know, one of the complaints my friend actually had about this nib is that because of the ball shape of it, it writes kind of boring, and I, I guess I can understand what he means, you know, there really isn't any line variation, it's not a stub whatsoever, it's just a ball nib that, that actually doesn't even have that much give, you know, the one of the things I really like about my, my M600 is that you know, Pelican started really using huge balls of tipping material on their nibs, and a lot of people didn't like it because they felt like it took away some character from the nib itself. But with the gold nibs, even on the M600, uh, maybe not so much on the M400 nibs, or um, you know, especially if you compare it to like the M800, M1000 nibs. Uh, but the M600 nib still has a decent amount of springiness to it, and you can get a little bit of line variation even without really trying very hard. This one, not so much. This one, you kind of have to push the nib down a little bit harder in order to get any line variation out of it. Which, you know, depends on what you're writing. Uh, I got this pen after after I saw how the nib performed and everything. Uh, I'm using this almost purely as a work pen. Uh, you know, at work, I use really, really cheap copy paper. And it's like, it's like sub 20 pound, you know. Usually paper has like the weight label on it. This doesn't even actually give an actual number. It says sub 20 which I assume means it's under 20 pounds weight per, what, however, I think per ream is how they measure it. Or, uh, no, it can't be per ream. But anyway, I'm getting rambling on about that. But it's like, I'm pretty sure it's as cheap a paper as you're going to get. And uh, this pen, when I write on it, you know, by, you know, it is kind of a wet writing pen. It's not dry by any means, but it's not a gusher. You know, it doesn't write nearly as wet as my uh, Pelicans. And um, this pen at a Japanese fine probably writes like what I would expect a European medium to write on on good paper. Like if I if I took a European medium nib, actually I have a medium nib on here right now, and uh, and I, I wrote this on Clairefontaine, and I took this and wrote this on the co on the copy paper, the line widths would be almost identical. Uh, and you know, at work they decided when they made the data sheets to make them tiny ass boxes that are like five millimeters in height. So. Um, using a super wet flowing pen uh, does not work out. I mean, unless I'm using really, really well-behaved ink, you know, like in this in this Pelican I have um, either, I think I have either Pelican Black or, uh, not Pelican Black, no, that doesn't work nearly as well. Uh, I have either Noodler's Bulletproof Black or Noodler's 54th Massachusetts, and I find that both of those inks, uh, they don't really feather all that much, they perform really well. Um, they do bleed through that paper, but not a big deal. I do that one-sided at work anyway. Uh, the thing is, the ink does spread slightly, um, but this isn't a super new medium. This, the nib I have on here right now is actually a, a pretty... Um, it's actually an old... It's an old um, two fi uh, M250 nib. Uh, you can see... Uh, making this video longer than it has to be. But you can see it's like a monotone uh, 14C nib. This is a medium. Uh, it, you know, on cheap paper, it writes a little thicker than, uh, actually even on regular paper, it writes a little thicker than my, um, the, uh, the modern fine nib, 14K fine nib that I had uh, that came with the pen, uh, which I'm not gonna really get into right now. Um, but, you know, back, you know, at least with the older nibs, they used to write a little finer just because the tipping material wasn't so much a ball. Uh, it was more like arrow shaped, so, uh, so to speak. But anyway, regardless. So this pen, because of how hard the nib writes and because basically it's a ball nib, it kind of writes like a ballpoint or a rollerball. Uh, smoother than either a ballpoint or a rollerball. Um, it, you know, you get a much more consistent, thick line of ink. Obviously, it is a fountain pen that's actually you know, flowing properly, uh, you know, one of the things that even the, like, some of the nicer roller balls that I've written with, like, uh, you know, one of my favorites is the Uniball Jetstream, um, those write really smooth, 
but the line is not very consistent. Uh, if you want to put down a lot of downward pressure as you write, then you can kind of get a pretty th thick, consistent line. But even then, you still see that the ink just skips very slightly. Uh, and that's, you know, because the, the ink is like an oil hybrid water-based ink or whatever and uh and it does like slide a little on the ball and it will skip sometimes and if you use even lighter pressure you'll find that it uh it skips even more um and that's you know regardless of how smooth the roller ball is it's just a property of the ink itself uh, versus with fountain pen ink so long as you have a nib that writes properly and has proper flow you're not going to get really all that skipping issues uh you're going to get a very nice dark consistent line with whatever color ink you're using and uh so it writes similar to that in terms of paper feel it, you know it probably writes like a jet stream except you know not the 0.7 but the one the 1.0 jet stream uh but the only difference is it does write a much better line and also it does write a little smoother in that i don't have to use any pressure at all uh, and with such a fine nib like this, your paper choice really does make a difference. Uh, if I'm using this nib and I'm writing on, you know, 90 gram Clairefontaine, I feel almost nothing uh, with my standard fountain pen pressure, uh, hand hand pressure, uh, because it is just, it's a very well polished nib with a very large sweet spot. You know, for its nib size, the sweet spot is actually pretty large. Um, but if you were to take this pen and write on really cheap paper or very fibrous paper or you know especially like laid paper uh it's you're not going to find it's enjoyable at all just because you know obviously the nib size is smaller and it is a finer tip and that finer tip can catch on things um regardless of how polished the nib is uh it's not a perfectly round surface obviously in between the tines you have a gap there for proper ink flow and there you do have kind of a sharp edge from between the middle of the tine and the outside tipping, uh, you know, the outside ball tipping. Uh, and if you write on a fibrous paper, as light as you go, sometimes fibers just stick out ever so slightly on the paper and your pen will catch and you will kind of feel that's, um, that you may feel that as like feedback or scratchiness. Um, you know, obviously if you have a much wetter writing ink, it kind of creates a barrier in between the paper and the nib itself and it allows the nib to hydroplane a little bit uh, and you won't really feel that resistance that mu as much uh, and it's, it's also kind of the main reason why uh, broader nibs write smoother as well just because you know granted there is more surface contact of polished nib to paper uh, but it is putting down more ink and it's not as fine of a point to actually catch on the fibers of the paper um, but this even on cheap paper using a light enough hand is perfectly acceptable uh, I, I normally like pens to be super super glossy smooth uh, on cheap paper this is not the case uh, with like a broad nib like on the, this medium nib uh, highly polished pelican nib even on cheap paper it writes glassy smooth this not so much but still does not scratch enough for me to not like using the pen and on better paper it writes like a dream so definitely a pen worth checking out one thing to note actually is that i want to consider this kind of like an m400 size pen and of course i'm wasting time going into my pen case but uh, one day i will confirm that this is this Pelican 400 Tortoise is actually M400 slash M200 size. Next time I see my friend with his M200, I will confirm that. Right now I'm going on the assumption that it's the same size. Um, so obviously since the 1911 is long, uh, just around, is slightly longer than the M600, it's going to be longer than the M400, um, or not the M400, the Pelican 400. But I believe when they're open, they're basically the same length. Yeah, close enough. Uh, you can see uh, it, it does taper down. So it's actually even just ever so slightly shorter than the Pelican 400. Um, but the nice thing it has going for it in is, uh, is section diameter. You can see that the, uh, the section on the 1911 is actually wider than the section on the, um, on the 400. And it's actually pretty similar to the M600 section diameter. Let's see if we get that to focus. You see, it's actually it doesn't it actually doesn't taper in as much. So maybe on the thinnest point, it might even be thicker than the M600 section. Uh, but that's one of the main reasons why I feel like this pen does write 
you know handle quite well uh, even though it is a shorter length pen or you know a, a more standard length pen uh, because it's not super pencil like it's not super thin at the section or at the body it is very comfortable to actually you know write with in hand versus um, you know I find narrower pens like this 400 here uh, for short notes it's not a big deal uh, but for longer writing sessions I do feel a strain on my um on like this tendon here in my thumb from just gripping such a small diameter pen so you know something to keep in mind uh, I, I do actually kind of wish that this was a little shorter uh, when it was capped just because it would fit in the uh, in like a pocket a little better um, but you know I, I do carry the M600 in like a breast pocket uh, when I have that option so I am kind of used to it although my pocket isn't as deep uh, so I do kind of have to tilt the pen slightly at an angle uh, to get it to really sit really nice and clip really nicely in not a big deal just you know a point to make that you know because the pen uncapped is smaller I do wish that the, its cap size was a little shorter as well so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video uh, this pen, if you can get it for, you know, this pen you can get from Japan for under under $150. You could probably get it around a $100 price range, which is pretty close to the Pilot Custom 74 line. Um, definitely worth getting, uh, but you do have to know what you're getting into. If you get a, a fine, it'll probably be a hard fine. You're not going to really get a lot of nib flex. Uh, you're not going to get a lot, a lot of line variation, but what you are going to get is a solid ball nib that will write and be a good workhorse writer where you don't have to deal with being super careful about your hand being very light in case you flex the tines out or something. Uh, you know, with this 400, it does have a flexible nib on it, and I find that when I'm writing with it, uh, it is a little more tiring because I need a little more hand control. I have to tense up my hand a little bit more uh, just to get it to write as um, a light of hand as possible and after a while that'll tire me out uh, versus a pen like this uh, even though it has a very fine nib on it because it's a hard ball you know it's basically a nail uh, I can write with varying pressures um, as I go along in my writing uh, you know sometimes as I get more tired uh, I will put a little more downward pressure down no problems at all still writes really, really smooth uh, especially for its nib size so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks for watching